Greetings. Ayatisha Jain, overall head of Code Peak, welcomes you to this advanced Git and GitHub workshop. Code Peak is powered by Avial and Geeks for Geeks. So this will be the structure that we will follow throughout this workshop. First, we will learn what is Git and GitHub. Then, installing and setup, creating a pull request, branching, advanced GitHub commands, merge conflicts, and something more about GitHub. So coming to the introduction, well GitHub is not Git, both are different thing. Git is a version control system which is the most popular version control system in the world. A version control system records changes made to a code over time in a special database called repository. We can look at a project history and see who had done what changes when and why. And if we screw something, we can easily revert to the earlier state of the project very easily. Now coming to GitHub. GitHub is a hosting platform service which is layered over Git for tracking the code changes on a cloud platform. Now that we are done with the introduction, I will hand it over to my colleague to continue the workshop further. So, hello, this is Shubham Patak, and I'm going to be covering the installation and configuration part of Git and GitHub workshop. Uh, we'll start by downloading Git Bash from the official website. Just click on Downloads. Choose your operating system here, and it should start downloading. If it doesn't, click here to download manually. Once it's downloaded, open it. So I have downloaded and opened the installer and we can begin with the installation. We can choose the directory here and check this to make sure there's a shortcut on your desktop. Leave it as it is. Choose your code editor. I use Visual Studio Code, so I'll just check that one. Leave it to let Git decide. Um, this one is to be left to the recommended option. Choose this, use this, and let it be. This is okay as well. This is also okay. Just leave it here and just. As you can see, there's a shortcut on my desktop now, and you can launch if you want to. So now we're going to configure Git, and I'll just follow these instructions. First of all, I'll set my username. This is the code. And then I'll configure my email address. Let's press enter. Now I can see if they're set or not. You can see the email and name as it. Now I can see all the details using this code. As you can see it works. So let's discuss how to install Git in macOS. So it's pretty easy. We just need to search git install in Mac and over here, this website and this will directly tell about how to download it on Mac OS. The preferred thing is homebrew because all these things are comparatively tougher. If uh, first you have to check if there is homebrew installed on your laptop or not so like we can check it by brew hyphen v so as you can see it's showing me the version so the homebrew has been installed in my computer 
but if it's not installed in your computer you can just copy this and paste it in your terminal and enter so it will ask your password and the installation process of homebrew will start so as it is done in my case so it's not required for me to do it again and then to install git you just need to copy this command and enter and it now it's saying uh, showing me a warning because in my system git has been already installed but if it's not installed in your computer it will automatically show the procedures and things will start getting installed and by this way you can install git in your computer So I hope everything is fine with you. So let's start the sample project. First, open your terminal. If you're on Windows, then open Git Bash as I have opened. If by chance you're on Mac or Unix based system, then open your default terminals. To make a folder from terminal, first go to the destination where you want to make the folder. For this, we will use CD command. Okay. First, look where you are. So for this, use pwd. Pwd is a command which tells you where you are currently. So right now, I am in the user directory. So traverse to desktop using cd command. Now you have switched to desktop. Then use mkdir the command to make a folder in desktop. Let's say learning it. And now we have a directory in desktop named as learning it. Here it is. Okay, great. To edit the file with nano, type nano and the file name. If you are Linux and Nano is not available and throws an, any error, then use the package manager to install it like. If on Ubuntu, then type sudo apt install nano. sudo apt install nano. If you are on Ubuntu. And then try the nano command which I typed before. Open this file. Okay. So type whatever you want to type here like first file of this project and now to save it press ctrl x hit y and hit enter Good. on mac it's command plus x it's similar on mac and linux okay now you can verify that whatever you wrote in or isn't there or not by opening it in notepad or there's one handy command to check if the content is there in the file or not. It's cat. Type cat learning one dot txt. And here's the content with which we wrote some time. Okay, so let's move forward. This is the main step. That is creating a git local repository to track all the changes you make in your project folder. To create a git repository. Type git in it. This will initialize the empty git repository in the folder. Dot. Now let's check the folder. Yeah, as you can see here, it has initialized a dot git repository, a empty dot git repository. Okay. That thing tracks all the changes which we make in our project during the lifespan. Now, there's one thing called staging area. Staging area is like an intermediate area where you add a version of a file or many files that you want to save for the next commit. To check the current status of staging area, type git status 
as you can see the file name is in red and saying untrack which means it's not currently being tracked by the git repository so to add the file to get track type git add and the file name and now type again git status and now here you can see it's in green which says that it's currently in track and ready to be committed so now let's commit the change and commit is basically snaps all the changes just making a version to which you can later switch back in the future if needed so to commit a file okay, give commit m and your message so replace the dashes with your message like here i will type first commit this message is important as many people can be working on the same project and if they need to look into your code and want to understand what you have did in the latest commit they can see the message you have attached and can understand and get summarized about the changes you have made in a project so type a very short summary like first commit or like this okay and hit enter cool now press git log what this command does is wait let me show you okay this is done this is done too okay so we will come to this later on let's get back okay so press git log what this command does is shows us all the commits which we have done till now as you can see there is one commit here it shows the author name or email attached to it which here in case is a github email and the change which we have done okay and now you will be thinking like if in your project there are many files like 50 or hundreds of files are there in your project and if you are going to add those files manually like git add your file name it will take days or lots of time actually so to avoid that you can just type git add dot, dot represents the current directory and the subdirectory is in it so what this will do is add will add the will add all the files in the current directory to the staging area so let's move to a next part let's suppose you were coding a file and saved it but after some time you remember that all the stuff you which you coded was wrongly implemented and you want to revert back to a previous version or a previous commit so let me do with this first file let me edit it and let me add some garbage text and save it cool. Now type git diff learning one dot txt. What this do is it checks all the changes we have made with the file. Type it. Okay, so you can see this is the change which we have done. And so if you want to revert back to the last change or the last commit which was you know safe this type git check out the file name learning one dot txt updated one path from the internet now let's check it out open it and voila it's gone the garbage values are gone and the file is back to its normal state the last change so this can be helpful if you know you could stumble somewhere and implement some garbage code which is actually not good for the project then you can just git check out and go back to our last one
Okay, so this was all about local repository. Let's dive into remote repositories. There are many remote repository hosting providers out there like GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and you can even host your own. As GitHub is the most popular provider, we will learn about it. Although all of the providers are layered around Git, so the features will be common among. <coughs> so, on your browser, log on to GitHub. If you don't have an account, you can make one. I already have an account, so I'm here. This will look something like this if you are logged in. Go to your profile page. Click on this plus sign. Click on new repository. Name it whatever you want to name it, just like like I'm naming it here as Git Workshop. So I guess it's already there, so let's name it like Git Workshop underscore workshop. Okay, cool, it's available. Keep it public and let's create a repository. <clears throat> okay, if all set then you will get the page like this. Now copy the git URL from here and open your git bash. Okay. For this we will use the command git remote add origin and paste your URL. What git remote does is it adds a URL to which all your files will get pushed. Pushed in the sense will get uploaded. Here it is. Git remote add origin you get the URL. So let's add it. And our remote will get added. Okay. So now to push all the changes which you have made it locally, type git push u origin master. Here origin refers to the name of remote and master. Here origin is the name of the so now to push all the commits type git push u origin master so here origin refers to the name of the remote which we did here at origin origin is the name of the remote you can name it anything and master is the branch name of the local remote. it's the default name of the branch okay so by default, if you initialize a new Git repository, master will be the default branch in which all your code changes will go. The branching will be covered on later by Gunjan or Hirsch, I guess. If you're comparing this branch with free branch, then yes, it's right, both are equivalent. But free trunk of our main code is not influenced by different branches. So Without getting further into it, let's press in, enter and push it. It will take some time to upload it. Okay, now it's uh, good. Now go to your GitHub repository and refresh it. And yeah, you can see your file here the content yes. to check how many commits and then have you committed you can head over to insights and then network as you can see we did one commit here on 22nd of August okay cool 
<laughs> okay, so now let's make a readme file for our remote repository so that if anyone visits our repository, he or she can get to know what your project do just by reading your readme file. So let's create one. Touch readme.md. The name should be as it is readme in capital afterwards.md. Okay, cool. And now let's edit it. Readme.md. And let's add some content. Heading. Subheading. Okay, so as you can see in the PPT, any text after hash will make it a heading like bigger and bold, and double hash will make it a subheading. Like it's bold too, but smaller than that. You can add more hashes, it's like HTML tag of h1 to h6. Now let's save it. Okay, cool. Now let's go and commit it and push it to a remote repository. So first we will get we will use and we will use git add to add it to the staging area. Cool. Then we will commit it. And let's push it. Get push origin master. And cool, it's pushed. Yeah, here it is. Heading, subheading, and a triple hash. Okay, cool, it's visible now. Okay, so now let's move up to our next component that is git ignore. So what's git ignore? See git watches every file as either track, undrag, or ignore. So git ignore basically avoids a file from getting tracked. So there is actually you know direct command in git bash which with you can deal to add files. So you may be thinking actually why we need this? Let's suppose you have a file which are important stuff like the API keys or tokens. You can ignore all those files from being committed and getting pushed to your remote repository by using git repo. So just to demonstrate, let's make one file named api key.txt. And let's add some stuff. Suppose token is it. File token. And now let's create a git ignore. So, dot git ignore. Make sure the name is exactly the same in small cases. Set it. And now let's open it and add our API key dot file. Add the file name if you want to get ignored. Like here in this case, we want the API key from not getting tracked. So add API key.txt and also there are some rules like you know hash for committing and let's suppose you type something like this. What this will do is it will ignore every file which have a dot txt extension which we actually don't need right now. So let's remove that and save it. <laughs> If you are working with dev projects or web dev projects or some other project, this GitHub repository, this one here, has some templates for users. So let's get back to the terminal. Okay. After adding the files to get ignored, you can safely add it to the staging area. Dot status. And then commit it. Should commit. It. 
time push it so now let's wrap let's open our github repository mm -hmm. okay here it is our getting profile and you may have probably seen uh, seen here like only git ignore is being tracked and not the api key. as git ignore is telling git from avoiding api key from getting tracked so when it gets pushed you will not get the api key in your public repository okay so now let's move on to the next topic cloning cloning refers to cloning or creating a copy of the repository at another location it's quite simple first go to the github repository which you want to know copy the link open your bash and then type it clone and the url and it will simply run it open it with your file repository this is it yeah it's here cool so this was all about you know command line parts and tips for it so let's move on to another main functionality of github like pull request so first let's talk about pull request let's suppose you want to edit some lines of code in a repository which is actually not yours and belongs to you know some big organization or public release group so this is done using pull request first go to the repository page post code you want to edit like here in case i have created a repository with my alternate account and then just click on fork option fork makes a copy of the main repository to your account which you can edit and later on merge with the original repository and this is how you will edit the code in the main repository so let's click on it it will take some time too nice now it's fog and as you can see it's under your name now go to the file which you want to edit like let's suppose instead of editing we add a file let's say my username okay and dot okay. and just click on permit and as you can see here it's saying this branch is one permit ahead of geekers main branch and as you can see here you can see the contributor just click on it and this one will show you the open pull request button just click on this and it will appear like this click on this yeah okay so the first name is the pull request name which is here in this case i added a file you can name it like added pull. and uh, you are in a in this section you can write a short description about what you have added sort of stuff like that if you want to explain about a pull request part <clears throat> and if all is quite good and all done then just click on create pull request <clears throat> and cool the pull request is created and currently is being stated as open so now comes the waiting time the owner of the repository still have to review your PR a PR can only merge when the owner or maintainer of the main repository, which are of course not, reviews it and allows it to merge. So, let's suppose if you are the owner and someone created a pull request here, I have 
log into geek dot incognito. Yeah, just, let's refresh it. And as you can see in here in pull request, there's one in here. So let's click on it, and here we can see the pull request which we did. So just click on this, and you can see the commit here and the pull request and our description here. You can click on the commit and see all the changes which we have done here. I am not sure. Oh, good. And as an owner, to merge this, you just need to first review the commit and then click on merge pull request. Confirm merge. And cool, now it's merged. And you know, if you want to revert it back, like you accidentally clicked on merge and you actually didn't want it to merge it, and the code is like not good and it is creating conflicts with other files. So you can just revert the commit. Click on this, which we here in this case we want to. Like you can do this. And now the till here, this was my part. Later on, Arshan Punchin will take the bar. So, yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying the workshop. Now we will talk about branches. Why branching? Let's see with an example. Let's suppose I am working on a project and midway I get an idea that we can implement this feature in my project. But I'm not sure whether my friends who are working with me in this project will like it or not. So here GitHub has an amazing feature. I can make a new branch and implement my idea over there without affecting the main project's code. Then after completing that feature, I can show it to my friends and if they like it, we can merge it back to the main project. So like over here it's shown, this green line is the main master branch. And this is the feature that I was talking about. And this is not affecting my main branch line because this is an alternative branch. But if I feel that this is good enough to be merged, I can then merge it back. Over here, if you read this, there is one more feature I'm using and it's XYZ. So we can have multiple branches. That's not an issue. And then we can merge any of them. So this gives us freedom to independently work on different modules and merge the modules when you're finished developing them. Let's see some git branches operations so you might be wondering how we'll make branches so so over here this is a repo i've made this website club courses it was a task and i made that so like i'll first of all clone this to my pc so I'll copy this over here First, I'll come to my desktop so that every file is visible. I'll clone this website. So now, as this is cloned, I have all the files over here. Now I'll go to this directory. So now I am on this directory. I'll open VS Code and see how it's there. I've opened VS Code and then I'll open this folder in VS Code. This is the folder. This is the HTML file. And now I'll show you the website once. So this is the website. Uh, so I I feel like that over here the search button Should not be in yellow. Let's suppose that's my feature That this search button should not be in yellow and I want to change this 
to something called blue let's assume blue and this is my feature so and i'm not sure that whether my friends will like it or not for working with me in this project so i make a new branch first of all i'll check which branch i am so if we use this command it will show that i am on my main branch and that's the only branch right now so i'll cre i'll create a branch so this is the tag over here so this is the command to create a branch so git branch branch so my branch name should be feature so now if i see branch i have two branches now but this is in green and an asterisk represent that this is the active branch over here so now to go through now to work on feature branch i must check out to feature branch so this can be done by this command now if i'll check once again now you can see the difference now i am on my feature branch so now i'll come to vs code and let's suppose over here i'll change this to primary so that it's in blue color now i'll reload this and as you can see it's blue in color now we can make more changes all right welcome to git workshop so suppose these are my changes over here now i'll come over here and see status so as it says modified i have modified the home.html file now i'll add this to my feature branch and if i check once again it's now green so it's it means it has been added so now i'll commit feature added so it says one i change two insertions two deletions and this is all on my feature branch now i can push it to the feature branch but because now the github's policies have been changed so now we have to use a github token instead of password earlier it could have been done with password so i'll go to settings i'll go to developer settings personal access token i'll generate one token you have to enter your password workshop and i'll click over here so this will give me all access to repo related operations and then i'll go and generate token so now i'll open github again and go to view now it's like to push it to a specific branch there's a different operation it's not if you write git push it won't happen because it's not on the master branch it's on the, some other branch so you have to use this command so it's so it it has been done but as i have done it before so it's not asking me a generalized person, personal token but if you would be doing it for the first time it will ask for your github url and then it will ask for a password but now as the policies have been changed you don't have to enter your password but you have to enter this token which you can generate on your own account and then it will show this thing so now if i check over here as you can see feature has been added so if i'll reload this one now over here feature is there and over here feature added commit is there and if i open this thing we can see the changes over here welcome to git workshop and then primary but if i go to main branch If 
file go to main branch and see the this same file it will be different see it's warning and welcome there's no that there they are not the changes that we made so this this way the branches happen we have completed our feature and we have pushed it to the feature branch now the next step is to merge the feature to the main branch so we can do this from here also but and we can do it from the terminal also i'll show you from the terminal so as written over here to merge a specific branch you need to keep some things in mind to avoid branch clashes so one is that you should be on the branch you want the things to be merged at and you need to write branch name of the branch you want to merge so i'll show you with an example so right now if we see we are on the feature branch but we want main branch and on main branch we want feature branch to be merged so we check out to to main branch now we are on the main branch and then we'll merge get merge feature this is the branch we need to merge and now we'll push the changes to the main branch so now as we'll see on the main branch feature has been added so if you remember that we wrote primary and welcome to git workshop and it's there and it's on the main branch not the feature branch now as the feature has been added we don't need feature branch anymore so we can delete it so to delete it there are two main commands and it is advised to use the first command because it does not hard deletes everything in this it will show error if you are not on the branch and otherwise it will ask you to not delete stuff when there are unfinished merges but this will force deletes everything so this is not advised now we'll use git branch t feature so it has been deleted because we were not on the branch we want to delete if i would have been on feature branch and used this command it would have shown an error so if if i see over here things have been deleted from there but it's not happened on the website because we haven't used the command to delete the branch from here now i'll use this okay and the branch feature we want to delete right so origin delete feature so this will push the delete to the website so if you'll see now it's one branch only and it's main branch but still the feature we added it's there so it's primary welcome to git workshop so these are the main operation in git branches so i hope you all have understood git branching now we will move to the next section now let us all look at what merge conflicts are so the merge conflicts are the events that occurs when git is unable to automatically merge the code so when we see that we are changing on the different lines so the git can recognize those different lines recognize those changes and merge it automatically however when the changes are on the same line at that point of time git cannot differentiate which change is better and it gives the merge conflict let's have a look at a practical example how this goes 
so here i have a repository and in the readme section you can clearly see that uh, on line number four needs to be changed so let's go to an another account and change this line number so i go here and uh, uh, in the readme file i go and uh, now on the line number four what i do is that i write line number four is changed okay so as line number four is changed let commit our changes and push the changes to the main repository so for that we would create a pull request and after generating a pull request what we can do is that create a pull request and give it a title changes made and yeah we can create a pull request okay so now uh, let's do one more thing we also have the same repository loaded on the local system and again what we can do is that we can change the line number four from here too so now uh, we can write here that line number four is changed locally now we have to uh, push everything so first uh, add all the changes uh, then commit the changes changes made locally and finally we are going to push the changes uh, so yeah we have pushed the changes now let's go and look at the uh, original repository that has this and uh, now we have the pull requests with us so uh, here is the one changes made this pull request so let's go and yes exactly we were trying to change the line number four from a different account and the system locally so now git couldn't uh, uh, decide whether uh, which particular change we require so we as a user have to decide what change is better so i feel that the changes made locally is better to me so i'll remove the changes at the same place made by some other account or uh, some other local repository so let's uh, keep the local changes and finally what we can do is that mark this conflict as resolved so once this is resolved we could commit the changes yes and we have committed the changes so finally when we again go now we can see that merge conflicts have been resolved and we can merge this particular pull request i hope now that uh, what are what are merge conflicts are clear to everyone So welcome to the next part of this session. We will talk about how we can use GitHub for collaboration and for actual practical purposes. So suppose you want to work on a project with your friends and there are multiple ways to do this. So uh, it happens many other times that the repository is a famous repository on the internet and you want to do is you just want to make the, some incremental changes to the repository and want to contribute to the repository in general. That is one use case. And the second case is the repository is your own. You're creating a new personal project or a group project and you want your friends to be able to add to that, to modify the files, to delete the files. So these are the two cases. So we will see both of them. First case. So if you are the owner of the repository, if it is your own repository, what you can do is you can add people as collaborators and each of that person has the access, has the complete access to the repository. He can write files, he can delete files, he can do anything to the files on the repository. So you should be very careful in adding collaborators. You must not give the access to any, uh, any stranger whom you do not know or whom you cannot trust with the repository. And one thing is very important. Again, all the collaborators can merge files directly to the master branch or even they can make pull, make pull requests. They can make changes. So you can add only, you should add the collaborators only if they are a core part of the team, right? So if they are the integral part of the team, three or four of your friends are working on a repository, then it is essential to add them as collaborators. But in other cases, when your project is a public project, it is mostly recommended not to add people as collaborators. So these are the steps on how you can add as collaborator. So you can go to any of your repository. Let me show. So you can go to any of your repositories, which I have created. So suppose this is my repository. I'll go to the settings. 
in the settings there is an option of manage access so go to manage access type in your password to enter the pseudo mode and now you can invite collaborators here is the option invite a collaborator here you can type the name username or the email whatever you have and then you can invite them the person will receive an email with the link to accept the invite and then he can come and contribute to your repository okay so these were the steps for collaborating now if you don't own the repository what happens if you if the repository belongs to someone else and you want to make some changes so in that case you will fork the repository what will you do in forking so as it has been already explained in the previous slides you can fork a repository that will create a copy on your own github and then you can clone it to your own computer make changes pull it push it to your uh, own github account and then you can create a pull request and once the owner of the repository the original owner of the repository will then check if your changes were helpful if they made some difference if they were correct then he will merge them so once your changes are merged your branch will be even with the uh, source branch and you can see your changes implemented in real life so this is the best way this is the way in which in most of the open source events this is the process that is followed that you fork a repository make changes and then create prs or pull request in short so that is the process for collaborating with people on github now this is the second thing you can also star and follow people so like we have on facebook twitter and instagram we can follow people we can make them friends so similarly github is the social network for coders and in this github there is a option that if you like someone's project if you like a project since everything is open source you have all the right to fork it you have all the right to use it for your own purpose but also you should show some affection show some respect for the repository then you can start the repository so what starring will do it will just uh, create some trust for the repository more people will want to contribute to the repository so it is always recommended if you find something interesting if you like someone's project give it a start so that more people can recognize that project also if you start something it is permanently saved to your github so you can go to your stars and you can see a list of all the repositories you have start in the previous time so you can get a lot of cool repositories many project ideas or many resources if you start the appropriate repositories secondly there is an option also an option to follow people so if you follow someone on github it basically tells everything that they do so if they create a if they fork someone else's repository it will show you that such, such and such person fork someone else's repository if they start a new repository it will show so if you find some people whom you want to follow whose open source activity or development activities you want to follow you want to see what kind of material they consume or what kind of uh, repositories they even follow so you should just go and follow them on github and it will give you all the updates whenever you open your github account so for example so if i go to my github home page i can see in all activity tab i can see many of my friends who had created a repository who had started different repositories so like this you can get a lot of details and i can also see some new repository something i did not hear see ml compendium so i did not know about this this might be a great resource there are a lot of stars so this is a great way to discover new repositories so this was the starring and following part of github so moving on to the next part of the workshop so we were talking about the cool things with github so now we have seen about collaborating but if you want to collaborate with people you want to tell them about you you will want to uh, let people know what are your interests what are the fields in which you are working what has been your past experience so github provides a very cool space for doing all of this it is the github profile readme so what will happen if anybody opens up your profile he will see first of all a, a short article sort of in which you have explained about yourself ki what are the languages you code in what are your interests and something maybe fun about yourself so you can include all that in your github profile readme it will be a you can say a resume come description page because it does not have to be too formal like a resume but you can include all that you want in that page it is basically your own page so for an example uh, let me show my github profile readme so if i go to github.com/any person so if i go to my username so it shows this page this is my github profile readme so you can see i have added a lot of things i'll give a link to all of these things and how you can also add anything if you like 
so these are the things which you can add you can add even more things you can add gifs you can add stickers so just make it your own there's nothing hard and fast so this is a very cool space which can, which you can use to tell people about yourself okay i have also included a lot of links because uh, this is one link which is particularly helpful because you can go over this place you can fill in some fields so let us go to this page you can fill in these fields you can fill your name subtitles your projects about your languages and it will automatically create a readme for you because writing markdown is not the easiest thing in the world so it will create a readme for you you can simply copy and paste it to your own github readme account okay and how do you make changes so you can see the github readme.md so what are the steps to create this readme file create a repository with the exact same name as your github username so when you are here click on new repository and the repository name should be same so it should be your same same as your username right and github will say you found a secret i have already created my user account a, a repository with this name that is why it shows me an error but otherwise you will get this message you found a secret that you can use to add a readme to your github profile right so make it public and then initialize it with a add a readme file and then create the repository after you create a repository you will see something similar so this will be the repository that will be created this is a readme file you can edit the readme as per your needs click on the edit button this is the markdown syntax you can refer more about markdown uh, from google or from internet we have in even included in the workshop slides so this is markdown and you can see how is it going to look so you can make changes over there anything you don't like you can make changes and then view and then commit the changes whenever you need so this is a very i find it very cool to make changes and like express yourself in this place so you can experiment with this so this is uh, something about github profile readme here are some more articles which you can add if you want to if you if you are a blogger you can add your blogs to your medium account you can even add your spotify last playing to your medium uh, github account so you can add a lot of things and you can just explore them you can do even more searches on google and you will find a lot of things you can add right and this is the final step which is portfolio website so github also provides you a space to deploy your own websites so suppose you want to create a portfolio website which you want people to see so uh, as you might know key to post a, to host a website on the internet you require some server you require some money that can host your web page but github per username it provides a domain name for each username and you can use that for free so it is very easy to use this repository so let me uh, show how to do this so you get your own domain to host your personal website and this is all free and the best thing it is very easy to deploy and it supports everything so suppose you just want to create a simple page with html css or even you want to create a full react based application everything is supported okay and even if you make some changes in the website so suppose you have added one or two projects and down the down the line after a year you want to add another project so you won't have to redeploy the entire thing just make the changes make the pushes okay and once you push the code it will automatically redeploy and whenever it redeploys your website gets updated okay so let's see an example of how we can create a personal website on github pages so github pages is that feature which i was talking about so create a repository with the name of your git username dot github dot io so let me show you suppose i go to my profile new repository then repository name should be for in my case gunjan dhanuka dot github dot io okay so this should be the name of the repository now since this is already existing on my account i have already created a repository so it shows me this error but otherwise you can create this repository and then it will be your default repository so for example let me go to my repository so this is my portfolio website okay so you can see i have added a it is a very simple website html css and then some images okay so it is very easy you can just uh, after you create the repository you can clone it to your local computer you can create uh, add files create changes push it over here and once it get pushed over here okay then go to settings once you're in the settings page okay scroll down 
you can see it has github pages pages setting is new tab so you can just click it out and you can go to github pages see you can see a pages tab so any project for any project you can see this you will see a pages tab over here go to pages and then it shows your site is already published at this domain so my site is already published i have nothing to do over here but suppose if your site is not published that will show you it is not published and you can select and save and then your site will become published at the github pages account okay at the github pages domain name and this is not applicable just for your portfolio website suppose you want to host your projects so you can do that for example this is my portfolio website so let me show you it is very crappy as of now nothing has been done on it so it is just a bare bones website okay so this is my portfolio website and suppose if i want to access some of my project which i have hosted so what you can do is simply see for example this project i've clicked on this project so the, it leads me to this project which i made so you can see ki uh, my url is same my initial url is same kunjanthanukar.github.io and i just simply deployed this corona tracker uh, project on this url so it creates a very formal looking and it looks very good when you deploy it like this okay so that also i can show you how that can be done how you can deploy other repositories so over here this is the repository go to settings okay again pages as we saw earlier and you can see it has been published so whatever pages whatever you want to publish you can go here and it will be published at this at the specific domain name so it becomes very easy to host all your personal projects and even your um even your portfolio website and for the portfolio website if you're lazy if you don't want to work on all of that so you can get uh, pretty easily you can get the html templates on the internet download them make changes and then simply push to the github repository that will create your github pages account and that will allow you to host one website for free so that was it about more on github github is a great place for all programmers because uh, essentially everybody uses it right and there are a lot of hidden features like the readme and the uh, github pages thing so i hope you learned something new in this workshop and that's it for this module. So this is all from our side. If you have any doubts, you can post it on a workshop section of a Discord channel, link of which is given in the description. Before I wrap up, meet the team which made this workshop possible. Thank you for joining and I hope you will contribute your way to the top.